Thanks everyone for joining us for this webinar on the launch of our new Martin product presented by Marcus Klusner. My name is Laura Lawrence and I'm the Global Marketing Director at Harman. Um, I have a few announcements before we get started. Everyone on the call is muted to keep down noise levels, um, but there is a chat function where you can submit questions to the presenter and we'll try to get as many questions answered as possible. This webinar will also be recorded as was the one earlier today and the link will be made available a few days after this presentation. We do have a number of other webinars taking place over the next few months for audio, lighting, video, and control, and we would like to encourage you to take a look at the different webinars in our Learning Sessions Workshop Series on pro.harman.com, as well as visiting Harman Professional University to see our many on-demand and certification courses that are always available to you for free. And now I'd like to introduce you to my colleague, Marcus Klusner, the presenter for today's webinar. Marcus is Harman Professional Solutions Product Manager for Stage Lighting and is responsible for managing a wide range of product families and solutions. Marcus has maintained a seasoned career in lighting technology and joined the team in 2008 to begin supporting the Martin brand. And now I'll pass the mic over to you, Marcus. Thank you, Laura. Thank you for the kind introduction. A warm welcome to everybody around the world for the second session here. Um, today we're going to talk about the brand new Martin workhorse fixture, the MacAura PXL. Um, this product was originally planned to be launched at ProLight and Sound in April. However, given the global situation um, amongst um, COVID-19, um, we had to, of course, um, we did not have the opportunity to launch at that trade show. So we didn't want to hold the product back um, uh, for a longer time. So we are doing the launch, the global launch, in this kind of format. So first of all, um, why the name? Why did we call this product the MacAura PXL? And the reason for that is um, with this product, we are amplifying everything you love about the MacAura. Um, this fixture is to be part of the industry standard MacAura family of products. Secondly, the P in the name uh, Aura PXL stands for more power than ever. This is our brightest and highest output version uh, in the MacAura family ever. Um, extra large, um, XL, extra large, it is the bigger brother. It's the bigger brother to the Aura and the Aura XB. And lastly, PXL stands for pixelated or pixel control. This product is 200% pixelated, dual layer with pixelation for the main beam and also the Aura backlight. So overall, the name MacAura PXL, and as an enhancement to the MacAura family and the modern twist of pixel mapping opportunities. Um, looking into more details, first and foremost, um, this product is uh, a sustainable workhorse wash lights. All of the fixtures in the MacAura family and also the bigger brother fixture, the MacConnell wash, are first and foremost um, really, really good wash lights. Um, with this fixture, we're bringing next generation Mac Aura optics. It's a compact and powerful fixture, even though it's a little bit bigger than the Mac Aura family. Um, uh, it is more, more powerful and hence, of course, um, due to that, uh, the size needed to increase a little bit. Um, it has maintains the unique Aura backlight effect, uh, enhanced with higher output and also pixelation. So let's have a look in comparison uh, where this product sits within the Martin portfolio. So as you can see on this slide, um, um, the pictures are actually to scale. So you can see that we have the MacAura or the MacAura XB, two pictures that have the same or identical footprint. Um, then in the middle, we have the new one, the MacAura PXL. And then on the right-hand side, we have the Mac One Wash. Um, so you see it's sitting right in between those two other pictures. We're showing this comparison to you to make you better understand where it sits in the portfolio um, and to make it more visible that it is an extension to the portfolio, not a replacement to any of the other two units. Again, a comparison on uh, a little bit on size and weight. Um, so the Aura XB is uh, six and a half kilograms. The PXL comes in at 15.6 kilograms and the quantum wash sits above with 21 kilograms. So XL, XL stands for bigger front lens. It's a slightly bigger fixture, 
uh, high um, impact front lens, uh, bigger bubbles for a bigger and more sophisticated look. Still designed with most care and attention to please the eye and looking great on the set. As mentioned, bigger bubbles, bigger look. Powerful. Um, simply said, the Mac Aura PXL is double on luminous flux compared to, and four times the intensity compared to the Mac Aura XB. This allows for bigger stages, higher trims, longer throws without losing impact or punch. This has been a high request from the market and has only come through via advanced optical engineering and taking Martin's proprietary optical concept from the original Mac Aura to the next generation um, and keeping the efficiency up and giving superb optical performance. Let's dive into more detail and comparison uh, between the Mac Aura style products in the Martin portfolio. Um, we have a wider zoom range um, um, on the Mac Aura PXL, um, 7 to 55 degrees on uh, one tenth peak, um, coming in at a zoom ratio of 1 to 8. Um, we have much more output, um, so we're coming in at 13 kilolumens with the in wide with the Aura PXL compared to 6 kilolumens output um, on the Aura XB and 15.7 kilolumen output on the Mecha Quantum Wash. Um, narrow um, lumens output, um, here we are at 11 kilolumen, which is almost on par uh, with the Quantum Wash and um, more than double compared to the Aura XB. It's worth noticing that, um, or mentioning that the um, maintenance of lumens across the entire zoom range is second to none with the Aura PXL. This is something that we paid uh, specific attention to, that we're maintaining output over the entire zoom range. Um, and next, of course, high impact, high intensity narrow beam, another key element to this product to cut through any kind of distracting elements on stage. We coming in at the narrow beam with one million candela, which is four times the more than four times the intensity of the Mac Aura XB and double the intensity of the Mac Quantum Wash. Efficacy, of course, advanced optics, um, um, LED engineering, cooling systems, etc., allow us to uh, bump up the value for efficacy to 28 lumens per watt. And lastly, um, enhanced Aura backlight. As previously mentioned, we have been tweaking the Aura backlight, so we have bumped up the numbers of the LEDs itself, and we have also increased the wattage, so it's slightly more powerful LEDs compared to the other products. So we're coming in at 141 LEDs, with a total power of 60 watt. This is three times the um, output um, of the backlight compared to the Quantum, and 10 times as much as we have on the Aura XB. So you can see that um, already from these values, the backlight in this product becomes much more usable and it actually can be used as a, as a lighting tool um, rather than only um, uh, an eye candy surface illumination. Mac Aura PXL. PXL because it is fully pixelated. Um, new ultimate pixel control. 90 main beam pixels and 141 Aura backlight pixels, all individually controlled. This enhances the effect possibilities um, vastly. This, this delivers an all new and truly unique Aura backlight effect for radical looks, for organic looks, for distinct looks, and also for subtle looks. All controlled as you like. The much bigger, uh, brighter Aura backlight allows for fixtures to be used on daylight shows um, and still Make, maintain a great visual impression. Um, the control options are also uh, numerous. Um, you can control the product via DMX, Artnet, Streaming SEN, or of course, Martin's very own V3 protocol. Um, and none of these, we will get to that later in more detail, but none of these um, control options are um, in any kind of way cut down into functionality. And of course, if you do not want to deal with um, extensive programming, video input, et cetera. There is, an, there is a um, big or extensive library of built-in effects macro that you can use if you don't have the, the setup opportunities, if you don't have uh, the periphery, or if you simply don't have the time. So given all this and seeing how it sits between Mac Aura XB and also Mac Quantum Wash, um, does it replace the Aura XB maybe? 
and the answer needs to be a no. Um, we made it to complement the, the family. There is still room for any of the other fixtures. There's still room for the original Aura, which was launched in 2011. So we're almost 10 years into manufacturing and shipping the Mac Aura. Um, 2014, we released the Mac Aura XB, and um, shortly after the um, Mac Quantum Wash. Um, so all of these other products, both the original Aura, the Aura XB, and also the Quantum Wash have unique features. Um, the small form factor and lightweight um, um, uh, body of the Mac Aura XB, of course, and the bigger face and the rotating front lens, etc. opportunities, ring control, etc. for the Quantum Wash. So let's have a look at the features. Main features, of course, include dimming and strobing, 16-bit dimming curves, etc. We have RGBW solid state color mixing. We have a pixelated main beam. We have aura backlight effect, extra bright and pixelated as well. We have motorized zoom with a wide range, tight narrow beam, fast, precise, silent. Obviously, since it's a moving head, we have pan tilt movement, also here fast and precise with fast and smooth movement mode. And of course, as mentioned, the internal effects macro library. I want to pick out a few highlights of the product to go more into detail. First of all, our best aura optics ever. Um, the genuine Martin aura effect and the genuine Martin aura lens look is being taken to a whole new level. We're reaching 13 kilolumen output um, in wide, again, double, more than double. Um, compared to the, to the Mac Aura XB. Um, we are allowing for uh, one mega candela high intensity narrow beam, which is a defined and hard edge, almost hard edge uh, uh, narrow beam from the product that cuts through very, very nicely in midair. But of course, we also deliver, uh, or the product delivers a nice, beautiful, soft edge uh, wash field. And we have also, with the new optical system, with the enhanced uh, lens design, reduced the glare and spill that often is associated with these kind of bubble front lens. Amazing colors. It's an RGBW color mixing system, um, fully calibrated colors um, for best consistency amongst product in the rig. And we, of course, have Martin's very own extended color mode for impacted, impactful saturated colors. Um, on top of that, we have precise uh, color temperature correction via a dedicated control channel, both for the main beam and also for the aura backlight. Um, and of course, virtual color wheel also for the main beam and the back aura backlight. Um, lastly, we implement tungsten emulation by demand. This is something that previous fixtures in this range did not have. But um, the request from the market is there. Um, we have successfully um, mastered the uh, tungsten emulation with the Mac Encore family. And um, we are putting this feature uh, by demand uh, into all of our LED products. Um, whisper silent operation. The Mac Aura or Aura XB are already very well known for being silent products. There is there is no doubt that these products are file, uh, silent in operation, both from from movement and the fax zoom, etc., but also of course uh, pan tilt movement and um, uh, um, uh, cooling system. So we have designed an upscale cooling system. So the um, the uh, Mac Aura PXL is actually even more quiet compared to the more or XB or even the Quantum Wash. So um, so this uh, qualifies the fixture for even um, more critical um, user applications, theatrical applications, or um, other instances where noise levels are to be kept low. Um, we, of course, implement uh, user-selectable cooling modes. So as with previous products in the Martin product line, um, there is um, constant fan modes, the ultra-low noise modes, et cetera, et cetera, that you can select from DMX control channel. Um, control, uh, looking at the connectivity of the product, um, as you can see from this slide here, um, we, the Mac Aura PXL um, is 
uh, bringing all the control and the uh, connectivity from the back of the head to the base. So we are reusing the exact same base and um, um, connectivity interface from the Megalure. So from left to right, we have um, our country one in and out. We have um, DMX 512 in and out, and we have EtherCon in and through with a fail-safe bypass switch, uh, um, switch system. So this allows for um, safety and also for peace of mind. Should a product um, uh, in the line um, go out of power or needing to have a heart reboot, etc., the Ethernet, uh, be that Artnet, um, streaming SEN, or uh, P3 will be relayed automatically through the rest of the products in the line. Um, and on the very right-hand side, we have the user-replaceable lithium battery behind that little cover. And of course, we also have the Martin user interface display and four button menu system. Let's talk about P3. Um, of course, the Mac Aura, just like the Mac Allure, um, is um, um, pixelated or can be controlled fully in all its features via the P3 system controller. Um, and here's the choice between uh, lighting control or video control that you normally would have to take, but with this product, you actually don't have to choose. You can choose or select or combine as you wish and even on the go. So you can choose to control maybe the main beam with DMX and the Aura backlight with DMX. You can choose to control one or the other with P3. You can mix, mix and match as you can see on this slide. Um, of course, this demands that the product is cabled via, via Ethernet, so you can feed the P3 input to the, um, with the Mac Aura PXL. And something very unique and very special is the DMX uh, P3 crossfade channel. So um, in this case, uh, using this channel, you can blend the content from your console to the P3 and vice versa. So um, there is, there is an, uh, there, uh, when the channel is at zero, you have full output from the console. At 255, you have full output from the P3, and everything in between, it will merge the input from both control sides. Um, but why should you even use P3? First of all, cohesive looks. So if you have a P3 ecosystem, if you combine the Mac or a PXL with other P3-enabled products, Dotron, Skeptrons, the new Atomic Dot, for instance, um, you get cohesive looks. You just throw in a piece of content into your media server, and your entire stage is playing back that content to give you the same look and feel across your entire stage. Secondly, fully synchronized video. The, video, the P3 manages to, um, or makes sh make sure, that all products that are um, um, being controlled by the P3 are fully synchronized to the same video content. Automated addressing and control, um, the P3 also acts as a setup uh, function. Those of you who have been playing with it or using the P3 know that it is very straightforward and very easy. The picture just pops up in the list and you can automatically patch it, address it. You have all the menu settings and control settings from the control channel right inside the P3. In fact, you don't even ever have to touch the menu system or type in addresses or changes, change modes on the, on the direct uh, um, picture interface. You can do it all remotely um, from the P3 simply uh, or even advanced compared to RDM uh, functionalities on DMX. Real-time feedback. Should a product have a, an error or a warning or a, a, a fault or is not connected right, you can see that right away on the P3 screen. You don't have to second guess. You don't have to walk on stage and look at the product. You know what's wrong directly from the P3 control interface. And of course, matching the colors between P3 and uh, with, via the P3 with any P3-enabled product. So your Mac Allure or your Mac Aura PXL will display the exact same calibrated colors um, in the same P3 color space as all your P3-enabled creative video products. A quick look um, at the control system layout. Um, um, where you can see on the left side, we have the input side, a media server and a console, and they will both feed their signal to the P3 system controller. The P3 system controller will merge the ArtNet from the console or streaming ACN from the console uh, with the HDMI or EVI or whatever input from the um, media server. Um, and then from then onwards, it's one single cable. It's just an ethernet cable that runs via a gigabit switch 
and then onwards to the fixtures. Up to 50 fixtures can easily be daisy chained um, on one Ethernet link, 50, 50. That is a lot of fixtures. Um, for comparison, DMX by the standard only allows for daisy chaining of 32 products. Um, bonus info. The free of charge P3PC in this case already allows for simultaneously operation of 129 Megora PXL fixtures. Um, so it's an easy step into the P3 world with um, the free of charge P3PC. Um, when we look at the entire um, um, P3 ecosystem, you can see what I've just been talking about that Megalore. Um, a profile or wash PC, Megora PXL are now extending the line of P3 enabled products. They can run on the same ecosystem um, with the same content as video atomic dots, Skeptrons, Dotron, Fetrons, and also the uh, install products, uh, grids and strips, etc. But of course, you don't have to use P3. There might be various reasons or um, 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 other um, instances where you cannot or do not want to use a P3, and therefore we have all other control options available in this product. First of all, we have four DMX control modes. Um, uh, the first one, the, the, the basic um, um, or compact mode with 17 channels. Um, this makes the product um, act as a standard wash light. Uh, in this mode, we do not have individual control of the aura backlight. Um, the entire color is uh, spread um, through the beam and also the aura backlight. This is the basic theatrical mode where you don't want to um, 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 program multiple fixtures or sub fixtures, uh, just want to have an easy go with uh, a nice looking wash light. And also using the backlight in same color as the, as the main beam output gives the lens a very, very subtle and uh, solid look. Um, Next, we have the 32-channel mode. That is the default mode. Um, this adds individual aura backlight control, um, apart from the main beam, and also internal effect macros, plus also the P3 uh, control channel. So that is why that's the easiest way to go. You can control the basic functions of the fixture. You can separately control the aura backlight, and you can also use P3 if you want to go down into pixelation. Next up, we have the 89 channel mode. This adds the individual control of the 19 main beam pixels on top of what we had in the 32 channel mode. And then we have the 512 channel ludicrous mode. This is um, the full blown pixelation. So with this mode, um, you actually get DMX control down to the single backlight pixel. Uh, funny enough, or by design or by coincidence, it add, ends up with 512 channels, um, bearing in mind that we're controlling 141 backlight LEDs in this case. Of course, this is this is this is a lot of channels. It's an entire DMX universe. It it, it will of course uh, push you to the limits in terms of cabling, etc., because there's basically one DMX link per product. Um, hence, of course, due to this, we are promoting the use of the 9089 or the 32 channel mode, including P3 control. And obviously, of course, we have RDM control for various mode and feature settings as well. Streaming SCN and ArtNet um, on board as well, including the failsafe bypass switch. And here, as well as on P3, we can link up to 50 units safely on daisy chained. Um, looking at the control diagram for basic or uh, um, DMX, ArtNet, or streaming ACN controls, you can see we have the console input on the left. Then we have a direct connection to the products uh, from the console via DMX, ArtNet, or streaming ACN. And then we have the um, gigabit network switch that um, um, translates the or brings the ArtNet or streaming ACN onward to the products. Let's look at some use cases for the Mac Aura PXL. Firstly, illumination. Illumination um, for wash lights um, is still the, one of the most uh, used um, uh, scenarios um, um, to use these products for illumination of set pieces, uh, people, key lighting, etc., etc. Um, 
Next up, aerials. Um, probably maybe even the most uh, used application or the most used case for, for products like, like the Macora and the Moric uh, and also here the Macora PXL. And with the tighter beam that we have um, uh, um, given to the Macora PXL, you can see even on this picture, you can see that uh, we have a very crisp, narrow, defined beam that will have high impact and cut through a lot of um, other light sources or video sources on your stage. You can also use aerials with pixelation, so um, the, the output of the individual beam pixels will also be visible in midair. Pixel mapping in direct view, of course, and also pixel mapping in midair. And of course, eye candy. The aura has always looked stunning in close up and never had to hide on stage. And with the PXL, we're bringing this even to a next level. Um, Brighter aura backlight that can actually be used for something for illumination. Um, in a certain zoom level, we are actually giving a little bit of a um, 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 twisted output. So we actually give some rays of light that are coming um, from that aura backlight when we took, take the zoom all the way to the back. So we're enhancing the eye candy possibilities for the, for the aura PXL to a whole new level. And of course, you can play with the zoom um, um, and with the front lens and uh, go all the way down to, the, to, to reveal the LEDs. So you can actually see the, the individual pixels of the backlight. And once you move the zoom back, you can actually blend the backlight nicely into the front lens. Let's look at some specifications. Um, most of them are um, close to final. Some of them are preliminary. Um, um, of course, they will, um, once we're finalizing the product for or shipping, some of these might slightly change, but overall, we're quite confident about these specifications. Um, first of all, uh, max lumens output um, in wide, out of the lens with 13 kilolumen. Um, the light engine itself, um, the 19 main beam LEDs and also the backlight LEDs that are contributing to the, to the overall output is uh, with a luminous flux of 19 kilolumens. Um, we have a center tight, narrow beam intensity of one million candela, or times the intensity of the Mac or XB. Um, the default color temperature at calibrated white is 6,500 Kelvin. The LED refresh rate comes in at 1,200 Hertz. This is something that we have um, been using for a long, long time, very successfully on Mac Aura products. Uh, and this counts for both the main beam and also for the backlight pixels in the, in the Aura backlight. Um, this is a common nominator that works with almost every single camera setting and um, even in high resolution, high speed cameras, et cetera, et cetera. Um, the zoom range in half peak is five to 40 degrees. The zoom range in one tenth peak or field angle is seven to 55 degrees. We are specifically mentioning both values for zoom range in, 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 in our data sheet. Um, because we can see a lot of confusion in the market for um, using one for tight and uh, narrow, narrow beam and the other for wide beam to bring up, to mix, uh, mix up a little bit with the values. So there's a lot of market confusion. So we are um, delivering both values in the data sheet, just like we do, or we've been the first to announce um, lumens for um, the light engine, as well as the output out of the front lens. Um, both of these range, zoom ranges uh, come in at a ratio to one to eight. Um, the light source, the primary light source is 19 times 40 watt RGBW LED. Um, the Aura backlight is 141 times 0 0.42 watt RGB LED coming in at 60 watt in total. Some quality uh, values. It is worth noticing that of course, uh, as this product is RGBW mixing, you can tweak uh, these values. So this is, this is what we come in at the ca default calibrated white, um, but you can mix and match and tweak your colors as you like. So in, for instance, even a CRI of close to 100 is possible with a system like this. You would just have to match this if it actually looks the way you want on the person or on camera. Um, DMX control channels four, uh, control modes for 17, 32, 89, or 512 channels in ludicrous mode. Um, and on top of that, ArtNet streaming SCN and P3. 
operating voltage and current and power consumption, um, the product runs on 100 to 240 volt nominal at 50 or 60 hertz, and the maximum amperage that we that, that this product will take in this case um, um, at 100 volt is 4.8 amps. At uh, 230 volt in Europe, um, uh, it will be 2.8 roughly amps, and the maximum power consumption is 470 watt. The weight, um, as mentioned previously, 15.6 kilograms or 34.4 US pounds. So, of course, all of these features, all of this electronics, um, the bigger base with the bigger power supply, etc., all these connection options comes in at a weight increase compared to the um, Agora XB. Um, speaking of size, um, the base and the yoke for the Magora PXL are identical with the Magalore family. So this this um, gives you a relation um, uh, in in the size of the product. The head is of course a little shorter um, and round. So um, but um, in terms of packaging, in terms of flight case options, etc., the SIP insert, for instance, will be identical with the Magalore family. So you kind of get a feel for the for the size of the product. And lastly, the front of the head, um, the spill ring, is um, prepared uh, for um, 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 accessory mounting. So there is three attachment points that will allow for our own, um, should we end up making some, or um, third-party uh, beam control accessories. So these are the preliminary specs. Um, it is worth mentioning that um, the detailed spec sheet is already available for download on the Martin uh, product side. So this brings me to the end. This is the presentation, the launch presentation for the brand new workhorse fixture, the Mac Aura DXL. Um, I'm pretty sure you have some questions. Um, I'm gonna hand over to Laura to um, moderate the questions. But of course, you can also email me directly um, with any questions um, related to the Mac Aura PXL or any other stuff at my personal email that you can see down in the Aloha Life Tent corner. Thank you for your attention. Okay, thank you, Marcus. We do have a few questions. Um, the first one is asking, is there a secondary Fresnel lens and how will you get the same aura effect? Um, yeah. Um, we do not. We did not implement Fresnel, Fresnel rings um, into the into the lens um, of the of the Aura PXL. It was um, on the on the Aura and Aura XB. The Fresnel rings actually did not have any did not not have any function as such for the beam or for the wash field. It was primarily um, um, used to blend and to also hide the the, the backlight LEDs. Um, and with this product here, with the, with the PXL, we did not need that, and we also did not want that. Um, so we have removed um, those Fresnel rings, uh, Fresnel rings from the from the front lens um, to give direct view to the LED when we zoom the front lens all uh, all the way to the back. So it was a deliberate decision to remove the Fresnel rings um, because they did not have any function for the for the beam output anyway. All right, the next question is asking, is there lens rotation for unique aerial effects? Um, no, uh, um, we, we did not implement the lens rotation in this device uh, or in this, this product. Um, uh, first of all, um, we already have a product that has the lens rotation um, on the McQuantum Wash, which will stay available, which will stay in the portfolio. Um, second of all, um, it, uh, it would have resulted in a, in a bigger, heavier, more complicated um, uh, product um, and also a more expensive product. Um, and you can also see when you look at the product picture, you can see that we have mounted the zoom lens with three um, zoom axles that also hide the um, um, accessory mounting um, to give it a, a pres more precise and a more quick and reliable zoom performance. Okay, the next question is asking, do you have to use the P3 to do all of this for pixel mapping? No. Um, we have, um, I tried to, 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 to mention it uh, on various times, you don't have to use P3 for anything. Um, you can control all the features of the product via DMX, Artnet, or Streaming SEN. Um, there's no limitation to that. The only reason is that um, um, we are, of course, strongly promoting um, um, the, the P3 um, for ease of use, 
um, for simplicity, for cohesive looks, for um, um, synchronized uh, uh, video output, and of course, um, to mix and match it with other P3 enabled products. Okay, the next question is asking, what are the beam control accessories mentioned and how will those attach to the pixel? Um, we we do not we did not yet design any beam control accessories um, um the current the current uh, reviews of the optics and uh, demonstrations um have um have given us um a confidence uh, that with um the little the little um, um extruded or um a spill ring that we have on the product already is um is a way um, sufficient to cut off the, the horizontal glare from the lens and, uh, and spill. Um, so we, at this point, we don't really believe that there is a need for uh, beam control options, um, like we had done with the soft lenses for the, the Quantum and, and uh, also the, the OREXB. But of course, if there, is a, if, if there should be market requests, then we will look into it, um, into such accessories. And of course, uh, we all know that we are always teaming up with um, um, companies like City Theatrical that will uh, sooner or later um, implement uh, specialized theatrical um, accessories um, for this product. Um, you cannot see it on this picture um, um, of the product, but um, the unit will have three screws at the uh, at the zoom axles that will allow for mounting of these accessories. That will those those screws will come with the product, and those are uh, Torx screws that will uh, go into the thread of those three attachment points in the product for secure um, mounting without the need for any kind of safety wire. Okay, next question. How does CRI compare to Aura XB? Mm. Basically, basically, you can answer that it's 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 the same. Um, um, for the Aura XB, I think we have never really mentioned any CRI or TM30 or other quality values in in the data sheet. And this comes back to what I mentioned before: is that um, um, with an RGBW mixing system, you can you can mix you can mix. Um, in, in whole different ways to reach CRI points, but it's much more important actually to to mix the colors either for the human eye or or for the camera rather to get hung up on values. Okay, the next question: Is there a built-in macro library like with the Quantum Profile? Yes, um, uh, for use cases or scenarios where you cannot um, deal with um, programming individual effects, uh, you don't have the time or the resources or the peripherals um, to run products in, in ArtNet or in the 512 channel mode. Um, starting with the, with the second DMX mode, I think that the 32 channel mode, we are delivering or the product delivers um, the effects macro library. This is the same kind of um, um, setup that we have been using ever since uh, the original Aura and also the Quantum Wash with two libraries of effects that can be um, synchronized, that can be um, modified in, in, in speed. Et cetera, et cetera, and also two layers of effect can be combined. So if you if you know how we've been doing the effect macros in the past, you will feel right at home with the Macora PXL. Okay, there's a few more. Um, how is it a 470 watt fixture when the light engine is 820 watt? Um, yes, um, of course, um, people are um, quick with their calculators and math. Um, that is quite normal for such products. I mean, um, now that we are, of course, are revealing a lot of data um, with these products um, um, because people are getting more and more interested in, and of course, um, you might question um, certain circumstances, first of all. Um, um, usually with these products, even though it's a 40 watt LED, you do not drive these LEDs at full output. Um, um, that has to do with uh, primarily cooling systems and, uh, of course, noise levels as well, and also with um, resulting cooling systems in terms of size and also weight. So if we would drive this product at really like 40 watt in total, like you mentioned, it's, it's, it's going to come in at 800 watt, then, then we would not be able to build this fixture as small and compact. Um, it would result in, uh, in in a bigger size fixture and, 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 and a more expensive fixture, of course. Um, um, not driving the LED of, at, at full output also has, of course, um, various um, advantages in terms of lifetime, 
um, uh, shift in colors, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and we're not alone with that. So if you look at competition um, and, and dig down into the data sheets, et cetera, you will find out that um, um, just because it's a 40 watt LED, that doesn't necessarily mean that you can or need to run it at 40 watt to get that kind of impact or output from the product. All right, the next question is, do we have the same multiple mounting points on the base as per the Allure? Yes. Um, I mentioned that the base actually is identical um, um, compared to the, uh, or with the, with the Megalure. Um, so there's the same connections, there's the, the exact same Omega attachment points on the back, and there's also, um, or in the ba bottom of the base, and there's also the clean backside of the base. So all the connections, the user interface, um, button, menu system, et cetera, are on one side of the product. So the backside of the product is, um, clean, which gives it the discrete look if it stands in camera view on stage, so there is no cables or display in the way. Okay, we have another question. Does the Pixel have a similar smooth dimming as the Mac Aura? Yeah. Um, we are we are giving um, the the Mac Aura Pixel has 16-bit um, dimming for both um, the the um, uh, main beam and also the the backlight, so it's very smooth. We have the four uh, dimmer curves that you can choose from as well. Um, so um, it performs very well, even under very very low end dimming. There is no switch or anything. The LED dim nice and smooth all the way to the bottom. Okay, and then a final question came in asking, of course, about product availability. <laughs> yeah, um, product availability and. Um, um, of course, um, we tried or we wanted to launch this product at Prolet and Sound, and um, then, then the entire world, including our little industry, has been hit by hit by the current circumstances uh, related to COVID-19. And Martin or Harman isn't isn't it is not an exception. So, um, um, of course, uh, uh, we are we are hit by that, and we are suffering from that. Um, so, um, Prolet and Sound has been cancelled, hence we're doing this online launch. Um, we have, um, uh, of course, uh, struggles with, um, you know, working from home, just like most of you do at home these days, um, uh, cut back in resources, and that doesn't only go for us, that goes for our factory, that goes for um, also our uh, raw component suppliers, right? Um, so it is a global situation that is impacting all of us, not only Martin and Harman, but the entire industry. Um, so. Uh, Initially, we planned to launch and also ship this product April, May-ish, um, but we already know now, given the current situation, that we will have a delay for that. We're currently looking at summer, so that will be June, July-ish for our starting up the mass production, um, but that is um, a best guess scenario um, for this product. We will keep you updated, of course. Your sales channel will keep you updated. Your uh, dealers will keep you updated on the availability of the product. Okay, that was it for questions. Um, I just wanted to remind everyone that you can reach out to Marcus directly. His contact information is on the screen right now. Uh, this webinar was recorded, as was the one earlier today, and we will be posting this um, in a couple of days. So if anybody on your team missed it or you wanted to share it or watch it again, it will be available. Um, and that's it for the night. So thank you so much for joining us. And Marcus, thank you again for the presentation. We really appreciate it. Thank you, Laura. Thanks, everybody listening in. Talk to you. See you soon. Stay safe. Have a great day, everyone.